this way. How about this? How about this? How do you be like that? So what do we want to talk about? What is it that we want to talk about? Welcome to the Cornucopia Project and the Fireside Chat. There's no fireside. Oh, this could be interesting. I was just thinking, I don't know if they kick you out, but if you bring some firewood logs. Okay, so. Welcome to the Cornucopia Project and my fireside chat. So we are today at the Hampstead Lake State Park and uh, it's been a overcast day all day. It's warm and uh, very quickly easily gets sticky but there's a nice breeze now out. I'm not sure if it's gonna rain. The weather forecast I can show a picture of that. The weather forecast doesn't look good for the next few days, weeks. It's, it's been a very rainy June. Not the, uh, not really the best. It's warm, but it's just rainy. It's, you know, like almost every day. It's, it's weird. It's, it's still nice, but it's weird. It's not like, it's not like beach weather, right? So, now I'm wondering, first things first, right? Can we turn this fireside chat into an actual bonfire side chat. So what we have here, can I show you one? Yes, I think I can. You see that? That's a barbecue. It was roast and everything. Those things are all over the place over here. And they're awesome. And I was wondering if I can just buy a pack of firewood right, from the store. It's like eight, nine dollars or so. So I was wondering if I can just buy one of those packs, make some kindling and just make a little bonfire. It's, you know, it's just, it's just small pieces. It's like, it's, it's, not, it's not a ton of wood in there. And I'm not sure if that is technically allowed around here but especially if it gets dark well it's probably closed over here when it's dark and the rangers are probably going to be out and about as well uh, it is always one of those tough things right it's but yeah that would be wonderful that i wouldn't have to go very far to do something like that i can just buy a bundle of firewood for nine dollars and make a little make a little bonfire have some fun yeah Hampstead Lake State Park it's a beautiful uh, park there's uh, multiple parking lots where you can uh, you know park your vehicle uh, it's centrally it's kind of decent located it's easy to get to you by car it's uh, right off a highway and runs along the highway on one side and along a major road on the other side. You know, the, the major road, there's more like a commuter road if you want. There's no houses on it. A lot of planes, too much noise. Uh, you, you can easily get here by bicycle. And I'm pretty sure on the actual nice days, as particular on the weekends, evenings, early evenings, it's gonna be packed over here. You know, people wanna be in the outdoors, which I can totally understand. I wanna be in the outdoors too. You know, like I don't necessarily like the noise from the highway and I don't necessarily like the noise from the kids in the playground, 
it kind of defeats the purpose. Then again, none of those probably like to see me sitting here with a camera having a fireside chat. <laughs> Irony. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I didn't bring a cooker or anything. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make a meal right while I sit here. I'm just gonna be chatting today. I had food already. I ate world famous McDonald's. It's it's somewhat repulsive, but. Um, my van is not yet set up for cooking. I don't have a fridge, I don't have electric, I don't have, oh, I do have a propane stove actually. But I don't have no, no fridge. Wind, lots of wind. That's what I have, I have lots of wind. going in circles here too and now there's another plane Ooh, uh, welcome to living close to New York City where there's always noise you, you, you know you, you can't live in or near a major metropolitan area and expect to have peace and quiet the infrastructure necessary to supply a metropolitan area uh, is simply going to be where it's going to be and that means there's going to be highways that means there's going to be planes that means there's going to be people all of which are make noise and pollute and now that the wind dies down the next plane what is it, like a plane a minute i think uh, the closest airport for me is uh, jfk airport and I believe uh, they fly about 3,000 planes a day that's not incoming and outgoing it's just outgoing I'm sure I, I'm sure that what I read was that there's 3,000 takeoffs every day think about that 3,000 planes there's 24 hours in a day it says one takeoff per hour that's 24 if there's 10 takeoffs per hour that's 240 and if there's 100 takeoffs per hour that's 2400 that's a lot 100 planes per hour Probably like 120, right? 120, 121, 122 planes per hour on average. And the majority of them are probably going between 5 a.m. and midnight. So you really talk about mostly 19 hours carrying the majority of all planes. That's a lot of planes. Just think about the logistics behind that, right? Like so, here I am sitting at the park complaining about the noise from the planes because I want to record a video. But think about the logistics behind that to make that even work. Yeah, you know, the, the number of people, the expertise, the technology, the skill, uh, the planning, resources, materials, and then of course the people. If there's an average, I don't know, 50 people per plane, 100 people per plane, well, let's say 100 people per plane, 3,000 planes, that is 300,000 people, right? Yeah, that's 300,000 people being moved out of this one airport every single day. And a lot of that benefits me too. I drive a taxi. I pick up people from the airport. I drive people to the airport. Now, I don't go to the airport without a customer. I don't like to hang out there. It's bad for business. I mean, it is technically good business, but 
it's not um, it's not efficient to do it on purpose because if it was great for business truly then a lot of people would do that and they will clog up the cure and the access to your customers to make it actually good business again this becomes a question of the scale of the of the operation people always ask why can't we all be successful well there's a very simple reason for that why we can't all be successful one is time and place if I see someone else who's successful at something I can wish to be that person or I can wish to be in that person's situation or position right I will I wish I was there right but the more important question didn't you ask yourself is what did I do to be in that exact position right? I can't be jealous of an individual who is somewhere who has done things to get there if I have done nothing to get me into the same place oh, I can hear already the people commenting it's not true uh, the system is just holding us systematically down it's not fair it's uh, you know it's rigged it's all kinds of things so uh, well I'm doing the same thing and I'm not as successful as that person and that's a valid argument right is any of those things true well, there is, there's always a truth to everything right I'm not into conspiracy. I don't believe the system is trying to single me out and punish me as an individual. I believe as an individual, I have options. So, so this is a subject I'm extremely passionate about. And the reason why I'm passionate about it is because I don't believe what so many people seem to be believing. I do not believe that the system is rigged, that the system is stacked against us, that the system is trying to uh, artificially uh, keep us down. Unless the, unless the system is what I like to call natural laws. Natural laws, well, we have three types of laws. We have laws of physics, we have man-made laws, and we have natural laws. Natural laws uh, we will find apply in economics a lot, in finance. Uh, they are most certainly based on cause and effect. And there are certain aspects of inevitability. And the, the main thing there, what I'm thinking about is, if something is extremely profitable and one person does it, that person gets 100% of the pie. If two people do it, that pie, and let's just imagine they're doing it equally, that pie just get divided in half. Each one is only getting 50%. It's extremely profitable. That's fine, right? There's still plenty for everyone. Then if four people are doing it, that very same pie gets divided in four. Everybody's getting 25%. You can already see that there is a difference here, right? And the difference is when one person was doing it, that person was getting everything. But now that four people are doing it equally well, and it was a fair, equally distributed market, now that first person would only get a quarter it would have 75 percent less of the revenue and profits that it would have had originally that's a massive change so if 10 people are doing it all of a sudden you're only getting 10 percent and if 100 people are doing it you're only getting one percent now if this business is very profitable and you know very prosperous then this could very well mean you might still have be you know, have the opportunity to strike it rich right uh, that is possible 
but this is where other things start falling into place if you're one person you do one thing you do it one way and that is successful everything is based on what you do in the grand context but if you have a hundred people do something chances are a hundred people will add variation to what they are doing in order to make that business work right so if a hundred people have their own way of doing it do we truly imagine that a hundred different ways end up being as successful as the one who's shown how to do it successfully and it can be there's no question about it right we have tons of restaurants and tons of restaurants are successful in their own way in their own way so there is multiple ways of doing the same thing however when you it's like opinions right one person one opinion 100 people 100 opinions now when you have 100 different opinions which opinion is right well does there have to be a right one <coughs> Well, technically, no, but practically, let's just think about there's, there's opinions or opinion ranges and the same for other forms of behavior and practices. There's ranges that will make something more appealing to a larger number of people. Perhaps people are not willing to form their own opinions and they simply say, hey, that makes sense to me. I'll get on board with that one. Uh, maybe people have uh, tried to figure things out, but they didn't have the time or they didn't put enough effort into the research. Or maybe the information is harder to acquire because it's, I don't want to say proprietary, but it's, um, well, you need to know where to look, right? If you don't know where to look, you're not going to get the information. So, coming back to the business, when a hundred people perform the same thing, exactly the same, then you would still expect somehow the same result, right? And to a large degree, if the market is literally unlimited, to a large degree, you could be right. But here comes the problems, the real problems. you're operating within an environment and if I do something to be successful in New York I'm basing my actions and my business on the environment of New York New York City right and the people within those people have certain preferences and they have certain habits and they have certain ideals and if I want to be successful I need to wrap my product or service around what these people would be interested in or could be interested in if I move my business to a different location I might have to make adjustments because the people might think differently or act differently because they're living in a different environment and it's a very common thing to look at someone and to say I'm doing exactly what that person is doing but then not actually doing what that person is doing right I'm making a video how, so, how many likes now how many views is this video going to get how many people of those views are actually going to watch this video to the end I would think because this is a chat video I'll be getting in the first let's say 48 hours I will probably get 15 to 25 views in the first 48 hours that's horrible
I will also get a average uh, view time of probably I don't know let's say two minutes will I have even a single viewer watch the video beginning to end probably not and I'm asking myself well, if other people can do chat videos why can't I and it's not that I can't but just sitting in front of a camera and chatting is not actually doing the same what the others are doing right I could say yes you know, there's an audience out there there's gonna be people who like me and who want to hear me talk but I'm making a very fundamental mistake and that is that even though I imagine and you could say statistically there is most likely a few people out there who want to hear me talk I'm making a fundamental mistake because even the people who like me want me presented in a certain way and that certain way has to be appealing it comes down to in this case to storytelling if I don't tell a well organized and structured story that catches people's attention and keeps them interested then people are going to be leaving they go to the next one nothing of interest right? and you can easily say this is a learning process I'm not very good with storytelling yet I'm not very good with videography and I'm not very good with editing yet 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 but do I secretly want the success of someone else already yes I do I was like yeah it would be nice Right? The more people watch, the more encouraged I get. The more people like, the more encouraged I get. The more people subscribe, the more encouraged I get. It would be nice if I was getting these things as a feedback. Right? That is essentially my revenue. Right? But I can't get that unless I'm providing something of value to those very same people that I want as my own encouragement so if I'm not doing what they want or what they like they can't do what I want from them right we are simply two people or maybe thousands of people on one side and me on the other we are standing in the stadium and I'm just sitting there in my corner, mumbling something under my breath. And just 10 feet away from me is a thousand people who want to hear what I have to say, or who might need to hear what I have to say, but they don't hear it. Why? I'm mumbling. I'm talking quietly. I'm talking in the wrong direction. Because I'm not addressing those people. I'm, the things that we need to hear still need to be presented in a form that is enjoyable to us right like think about social media right so think about social media what do we have on social media very often in the comment section People that support us, people that like us, people that encourage us. And then we're having those haters and trolls. Right? But the haters and trolls give us actually an important message too. And part of the message that they're giving us is they tell us that we're only presenting a fraction of a bigger picture. They're telling us that we're leaving something out. And you can easily say that they are absolutely right. But you can also say that the presenter, the creator, has to make choices in the creative process. Which means you can't please everyone at the same time. 
but and he is part of the irony he is part of the irony right if you try to please everyone you end up pleasing nobody because no one likes someone who is on all sides of the debate because you just don't know what that person is really thinking so we're having a better chance of creating focus focusing on a target group that can be easily defined relatively easily be defined in a narrow way because the more narrow our definition of our target group the more we can appeal to the things that they like and as a creator um, if I want to have viewers and return viewers I need to keep saying things that you want to hear or that you like to hear right it's 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 a presentation of the message you know it's like being a comedian right you having you having one one high after the other right one joke after the other you got to keep that audience laughing you don't just want to get a standing ovation at the end of your act you need to keep them laughing in between then they will give you a standing ovation so but how does this relate to success right coming back to the success part why is it equal or why is it not equal if I'm in different locations, I have to approach the same business differently. Many times, a principle, as it can be taught, remains the same, but how you dress it up is different, right? So you can easily say that, you know, a box of chocolates is a box of chocolates. And in one area, I'm gonna put uh, one type of wrapping paper on it in another area, different wrapping paper, right? The box of chocolate for children, I'm gonna put SpongeBob on it. And if it's for adults, it's gonna be something a little bit more mature perhaps. And if it's for, I don't know, your grandparents, you put something on that they would probably feel comfortable with, right? But you still might give the same box of chocolates. Yet you package it different for each group, right? So the packaging is the only thing that has to be adjusted to your target audience. So should you do things the way that one successful person does? No. But you can learn from that. You can learn the principles of how they conduct business so that you can turn them, so you can turn those principles into the tools that you dress up for your own particular target audience. But we're going back to our pie. How big is your audience? Are you getting a piece from that same pie? Or are you operating from a different pie? Right? You could say New York City, massive size pie. Philadelphia, on the other hand, very small pie. Yet, you can fail in New York City and be successful in Philadelphia. Maybe you are just approaching your business wrong. Maybe there's too much competition. Maybe your region does not have the right clientele in order to support the business you're trying to pull off. There's a lot of questions that we have to ask ourselves of why we are not getting the result that we want. And thinking or saying that it's something that is systemic or bigger that is holding us back artificially takes one important tool away from us and that is a tool of accountability if I firmly believe that if I do something different that I will get a different result then I maintain control over my decision-making and I maintain control over the results. Accountability is the most important thing. If, I'm not, if I don't practice accountability with my own actions, honest accountability, then I'm never gonna get to where I want to go. Honest accountability.
I give you another example of honest accountability. I'm an older guy, I'm in my late 40s. I'm tall, so that's a plus. Right? Um, I'm big, I'm almost 400 pounds. Um, I'm not groomed particularly well. And my clothing is, well, I'm almost 400 pounds. It's not the greatest. So if I go out to a bar, what do I think are my chances of picking up a girl? Think about it. What are my chances? I'm like, hey, I'm just another guy. I'm nice. I'm friendly. I can be funny. And, you know, like, well, if they get to know me, if they just give me a chance, then they might see that I'm a nice guy. Yeah, but it's, I'm wrapping myself up in a package that I know my target audience is not interested in. Get it? Sure, I'm tall, it's a plus. I'm not that well groomed. Maybe better grooming would give me a plus, but I'm not doing it. It's a negative. I'm four, almost 400 pounds heavy. That's a negative. Oh, there's going to be girls that who like a big guy. Yeah. My dress coat is not particularly appealing. It's a negative. I myself wrap myself up in a package that is going to get rejected long before people have a chance to get to know me. Right? From a single's perspective. I have to be honest with that. That's my accountability. If I want a different result, guess what? I've got to do things differently. Of course, I could say, hey, you know, let's just go to a different place. Maybe at the other bar, there's the girls uh, who like to be with a guy, like whatever I'm presenting, right? No. Ask a hundred people and what they like in a person or who their favorite people are and then define their likings you know what do you call those apps the swiping apps dating apps <laughs> the tinders of the world right what are they based on picture mostly face right maybe a little bit of a body name age picture name and age the only three things that you know you don't really care about the name. You care about the picture and maybe the age. And you're gonna be like hot, ugly, hot, ugly, hot, ugly, hot, ugly, hot, 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 ugly, 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 ugly. Right? That's our first impression. The rapper is our first impression. If you mess up your first impression, what do you think? How many chances you get? to present who you are as a person and it's the same with business you've got to present what we want to present in an attractive package the packaging is everything many times you could say it's the product is the same from one to the next yeah but i'm buying the one that has nicer packaging because it makes me feel better it makes me feel like I'm more distinguished because the packaging is more exquisite in its presentation, right? The packaging that I pick in the end becomes part of who I think I am, right? I'm not necessarily, but it makes me feel good. And that's the whole thing. If I feel good, if someone makes me feel good, I'm going to give that back to them, right? So I like to buy Apple products. Apple products, they look nice and sleek and they have got great packaging. And that's why I'm willing to spend my money in there. Right? Over and over. Tons of money. Packaging is everything. And that is where we need to be more aware. I might be doing what the other guy is doing, but if I don't package in an attractive way, 
I'm not going to get the same feedback. And this is when we start seeing something like market saturation, brand name recognition. Right? If you're doing something already, how likely are you to switch? All of a sudden, we need to redefine our target audience. Younger people are generally easier to influence, and younger people like to experiment more. The older we get, the more we are set in our ways. Right? So your target audience really should be, many times, a younger clientele who can then grow older with your product as their favorite. This way you can carry that audience from the young age all the way into the old age. And this is super important. You know, you need to understand how to influence people. There's some famous books out there. I think um, Dale Carnegie wrote one, wrote more than one. Um, I think it was about how, how to make friends and how to influence people. You know, it's, it's not about being fake. Unfortunately, a lot of it is being seen as fake these days. But the reason why things appear fake is not just because they might be fake, but because so many people are trying, right? The more people try something, the more you may actually get turned off by it. And you're gonna stick to a much smaller uh, product range or a group of people as your gold standard. Right? The more people try to get into YouTube, the more you get exposed to them, you don't like the way they do it because they're not good at it yet, right? But then you stick to, to your core group of people. So like, yeah, they, they, they talk my language, right? Uh, to, to you, they're not fake. They have just become very good at telling the story and at, uh, you know, wrapping it up in a package. But let's get back to the pie one more time because I don't think I finished the pie properly. So when you have your pie and one person gets 100%, 100 people get 1% each, right? If something is very profitable, there is a limit to the market. This is why we talk about natural rules. There's a limit at which point the competition between people becomes a game of market not just market dominance but it becomes a game of who can get their fair share right because the market is not evenly distributed because you and i may like different things but if i know only of one person but not of the other why would i go to the other right so if someone comes early they have an early bird advantage. They've been there before. They are already being recognized. They have the name. They are the brand. Everybody knows McDonald's. They are the brand. Your little uh, burger shop, it's not the brand. For locals, the little burger shop might be the place to go to. But for someone who is new to the area, what is the chance of rather going with the old established McDonald's compared to the small unknown burger joint? You want to get something that you know, that you can rely on, right? And that is the early bird advantage. Whoever does something first has the advantage. Now there's still, of course, a certain amount of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, development necessary usually so there is chances for other people to get into the game and get a good chunk of the pie but if it was evenly distributed then there will be a limit to how many players you can have in that particular game so let's take a small town 
That's a thousand people in town. And you have one restaurant. It's an Italian place. And that Italian place needs to make thousand dollars in sales a day in order to stay in business. It just pays all the bills, pays all the people, it pays the product and it makes a profit. But the town of a thousand people, which is really more like 500 couples, they don't go out every day. So if they go out only every other day, they might be providing you with enough free income for your one business. But then a second business opens up down the street. I don't know. It's a, I don't know, Chinese restaurant. Because they say, oh, there's an Italian restaurant, we need to have a Chinese restaurant here. Now the people have choices, they have got options, right? They can go to one or they can go to the other. But this doesn't mean that the people go out twice as much. It only means that their spending dollars are now divided between two different restaurants. And this might still be fine. But now you have a third restaurant opening up. And all of a sudden, because the people don't change their overall spending, but they're divided between the options. All of a sudden, your income goes down, your revenue goes down, because the pieces in the pie have become smaller, and you you no longer make the same profit, right? So now, since we are only starting to talk profit here. Because they're like, okay, my profit is down. Maybe it's just this day. Maybe it's just this week. Maybe it's just the month. Maybe it was something on the news. Yeah, there can be some outside influence for why people may be spending money differently. You know, maybe they haven't been going out to any place, right? You just don't know. But then a the fourth place opens up, and then a the fifth place opens up. And you very well know at this point that your reduction in not just profit, but revenue overall, all the way to the point of starting to hurt your business is based on the variety that people can choose from. So people diversify their spending and that means because there's a diverse options range available and that means all of a sudden your piece in the overall pie has not just gotten smaller, which you would normally say, well, it's equal distribution, right? But it has gotten so small that it's harder for you, not just to make a profit, but to justify being in business. You might be faced with, do I cut working hours? Do I cut a position altogether? What can you do to remain a viable business? Right? So it, it becomes very difficult and you definitely learn at this very moment that you need to compete with the other businesses. Right? Now it's competition. Before you were the only game in town. There was no competition. You were doing well. You had the pie to yourself. Now there's five restaurants total. Now you have to compete for the limited amount of revenue that can be created. And now you start advertising campaigns. You start supporting your local little league with, uh, with jerseys. You start uh, early bird dinner specials. You start uh, wine specials on the weekend. Maybe you start having, I don't know, you have an Italian restaurant, right? Maybe you have uh, Italian music specials. <coughs> anyway. Where was I? So we get to compete. And all of a sudden, we, since we are no longer the only game in town, what we do matters. And now it becomes a game of skill on how to get people to support me instead of the other guy. 
and this is where the field is greatly going to divide into winners and losers into those who thrive and make a ton and those who struggle and have a hard time keeping up because they all come at different skill levels and different knowledge and different willingness and uh, all of a sudden the product itself may no longer be actually at the center of the success itself but the packaging is the wrapper our public image all of a sudden becomes the centerpiece of our success so when we look at other people and ask why are they successful when i do the same thing it is probably because we are not doing what they are doing we have a similar product but we sure as hell don't have the same way of presenting it And this is where our idea of equality and diversity and, and stuff like that is going downhill. It's just unrealistic. It's not going to happen. Equality doesn't exist. Okay, we're back. So, so yeah, this, uh, this idea of equality in business doesn't exist. Never has, never will. And we need to be honest with ourselves, asking ourselves, am I doing what is necessary to succeed? And I can experiment many times. And I always have to ask myself, not just, am I doing it and someone else is trying to punish me by not giving me my success? But I've got to look at my, 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 uh, the other side of the equation. Who is my clientele? And how come my clientele is not responding to me? Right? Because that is the response that we want. We want the clientele to respond to us and our products and service. If they're not responding, it's because we're not doing anything to make them respond positively. You know, someone's showing up for your business once. That's great on opening day. But you know what? In order to have a business, you need them to keep coming back. And that is the main challenge. You know, anyone who is not used to business is focused on a one-time thing and they forget that repeat business is what makes you successful the one-time sales could start but the repeat business is your goal right the repeat business is what maintains you again YouTube channel right if you come watch one of my videos or only a fraction of a video that is awesome for that video but I really need you to come back and not and watch the next video as well and maybe watch the one before that too all right watch all of them and watch them beginning to end because I want your repeat business I'm hoping to have a message for you that you find appealing and the same applies to any business any product any service there's no difference between the different businesses the product and service is different but in the end of the day you've got to figure out who your audience is who your target audience is and how to make those people happy you know your own personal happiness is of no importance completely irrelevant what you think and desire is completely meaningless. If you need someone else to pay something or do something for you in order to be successful, then you need to do something that they want to either pay for or interact with. It's kind of like a paying it forward kind of principle if you really think about it and many times you will waste a lot of resources on trying to figure things out and this is i guess part of the inequality kind of equation if you need to waste a lot of resources in order to figure things out um, that means you also need to have a lot of resources to figure things out now if businesses are a little bit bigger let's say you want to manufacture something then you also need specialists for the for their respective uh, fields 
right? In a restaurant, right? I need a chef. I need someone in the kitchen that cooks. Well, not just cooks. I need someone in the kitchen who does the purchasing of, uh, of product, who does the inventory, who makes sure nothing goes bad, who makes sure everything is the way it's supposed to be, who writes a menu, who makes the recipes, right? I need someone up front. Someone needs to be the bartender. Someone needs to keep control of inventory. You know, I've got wait staff. You've got the host. You need to schedule things. You have to manage the business side of business, not just the serving food to people side of business. There's so much involved in business. And in the beginning of every business, it's a one-man show. And guess what? You might be passionate about this thing you want to do, but chances are you know very little about the other parts of the business. And that is where you most likely will fail. You know, sometimes you get lucky, but many times it's there's little things wrong, right? And if you can't figure those things out quickly, then your business numbers will change and they will go downhill. And it's hard to get customers back that you've lost because they know you only as one person. Do people give second chances? Yeah, sure, people do. But if they have another option, why would they? If people have another option, why won't they want to give you a second chance? Because you're an awesome person? <laughs> That's a long shot, man. That's a long shot. People have short attention spans. I want this and I want this now. Why do, why do things like Uber Eats exist and Grubhub and Seamless? Because people don't people want food. They don't have the time or expertise to cook their own meal. So they want to order it and they want to get it delivered. I drive for Uber. How many times do I drive a customer home from a bar and along the way they're ordering Uber Eats to be delivered? That means they want to get home, take their shoes off and have the Uber Eats guy show up. They don't want to stand spend time in the kitchen. So if they ordered from you, but your food took very long to, to prepare, and now they have to wait for your food for an hour, what do you think when, who they're gonna call next time when they want something to eat? They're not gonna call the guy that took forever. It doesn't matter what your reason is. Had a bad day, kitchen broke down, staff didn't show up, power outage it's meaningless people people remember only it's like oh that place takes forever yeah food is good but geez man i don't have time for that maybe different time different place but you know what it's not going to be the first place to remember right your, your memories are based on things that you like that are positive not some negative things Name your top three restaurants. You're not gonna remember that place that took forever. That pie. Eventually the pie is gonna be divided so far that that profitable business can no longer be profitable with the amount of competition in existence. And at that moment, there will be a major shift within the allocation of slices and the pie to the businesses those who have a better handle on how to please their customers will get a bigger piece and those who don't have a good handle get a smaller piece that means some people will be winners and some people will be losers some people will go out of business and some people will see this as an opportunity as they should Success is not guaranteed. Success is not guaranteed ever. Continued success is also not guaranteed. Because the more customers you have, the more customers you don't want to piss off. Right? 
thing about the uh, what was it called uh, that recent uh, Bud Light advertising campaign that they had. I don't, know, I don't watch a whole lot of commercials, right? But this one came across my screen. A lot of people were upset about that. I don't know what's in the commercial really. Um, ironically, a lot of people made parody of it, which is actually funny. This is how I know most of whatever happened there to Bud Light. People made parody of it. It's a way of expressing you fucked up. You know? When you have a lot of customers, you can also lose a lot of customers. Continued success is not guaranteed. It doesn't mean the company would go necessarily out of business, but they may lose a good chunk of customers for a period of time. And that means they will have to spend a lot of time and energy on either trying to get those customers back or on grooming new customers to replace them. Right? Things that were natural before all of a sudden become a struggle because you made a major mistake. And you know, this is this is this is a world of business, right? When people are employees, they don't have to worry about business decisions unless business decisions impact them directly, which might be when they get fired or when they're looking for employment opportunities. Uh, but otherwise, business decisions, they're hard. They take a lot of accountability and it's easy to complain about a business, especially a big one, for you know not doing what we might like. But you know what? What we might like might hurt their bottom line. And you know what? In the end of the day, a business is there to be in business. It means it needs to make revenue, it needs to generate a profit, because that is the definition of a business. If it doesn't make a profit, it's a charity or a failing business, right? You gotta decide where you wanna be. Do you wanna be a charity, a failing business, or a successful business? You only have those three categories. And uh, yeah, accountability to yourself. Be honest, because if you lie to yourself, How are you going to learn? How are you going to learn from your mistakes if you're not honest with yourself? You know, two people can have the exact same experience and have a different takeaway from it. Right? They draw a different conclusion from it. And that conclusion is mainly based on your mindset. If you want to have accountability and reflect on your own actions, you can learn that if you do something different, you will get a different result. But if you want to believe that everything is because there's something bigger that is trying to control things and that is your main way of looking at life, then you will never be accountable to your own actions. You're essentially burying yourself in the spot that you don't want to be in. And uh, that is essentially the core message, accountability. You gotta be honest with yourself. Yeah, so much for the fireside chat. Oh, my butt hurts. Should have brought a little cushion. <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't have brought a cushion. Yeah. better oh no they're coming to get me I gave away the secret to business <coughs> they're trying to get me no 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 oopsie oopsie don't want to tip over with this fucking um, with this table that would be embarrassing it would also hurt hey got a little hiccup I guess I got a big key gun. Yeah, my pepper! 
do. I... Let's head back to the van. Let's review the footage. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Do who? It looks a little um, rainy out there, so there's a good chance it's gonna be raining soonish, maybe ish. But I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna have one of these little guys. Not even cold. I didn't just buy this. I had this. I've had this box. It's not even half empty yet. I had this probably for two weeks already. Hmm. And it's just sitting here, not refrigerated. Salute. To your success, to my success, to our success, to all the wonderful things. Life is complicated, life is simple, life is wonderful. Cheers. You know, considering how overcast it is, I'm surprised about all the people here at the park still. Even people just showed up playing ball. Alright, have a nice night. <laughs>